All right, class, so this is one of your um, first Alex topics for chapter seven, um, but this one is about interconverting wavelength, frequency, and photon energy. So the two equations that we're gonna sort of need to utilize here, the first one would be energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency of the light. And then the other equation is gonna be C equals lambda times, wa um, C equals wavelength times frequency. So the speed of light is equal to the wavelength of light uh, times the frequency of that light. So these are the two equations that you would sort of need to, to bring with you to solve a problem like this. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. So this problem says it takes 146 kilojoules per mole. So when you're doing this problem, you might see those units and you might sort of freak out a little bit or maybe not freak out, but just sort of get depressed because um, we're not really used to seeing those. So we'll talk about units a little bit and how we deal with that um, in just a little bit. But it takes this amount of energy to break an oxygen oxygen single bond. So this is sort of what we're talking about here. And the whole per mole thing, really what that's telling us is that this is the amount of energy it takes to break all of the oxygen oxygen single bonds in a mole of oxygen, you know, a sample of a mole of oxygen atoms or molecules. So it says calculate the maximum wavelength of light for which a single oxygen oxygen single bond could be broken by absorbing a single photon. So the question is really asking about one single oxygen oxygen bond. Um, and then the stuff that it's giving us, the information it's giving us, this is telling us if I have a mole of these molecules, this is the amount of energy it's gonna take to break all of those single bonds. It's a little confusing there, but hopefully that makes sense. Um, this value, one more time, this is the amount of energy it's gonna take to break a mole of single bonds, so if I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of these molecules, this is the amount of energy I would need to put in to break all of those single bonds. But the question is asking us, for just one single one, if I shoot a photon of light at that, how much energy does that photon of light have to do, uh, have to have to break this one, you know, single um, oxygen oxygen bond? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with this 146 kilojoules per mole. So this is the amount of energy it takes to break one mole of bonds, but I'm really only concerned about one molecule. So the conversion factor that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use Avogadro's number, and I know that one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, right? So um, this conversion here, this is gonna tell me the kilojoules that it's gonna take for a single molecule to break a single molecule's worth uh, of, of bonds, basically. So for this problem, I'm also gonna start showing you the calculation that I'm gonna do. So 146 divided by 6.022 E23. That's the way that I would enter it into this calculator. And my answer is 2.42 times 10 to the minus 22nd kilojoules per molecule. So I wanna make sure that I'm following my units very nicely. These units of moles will cancel. So this is the amount of energy it's gonna to take to break one of these for one molecule, one of these bonds for one molecule. So this is my energy. Um, now in this E equals Planck's constant times frequency, we've been using joules, you know, joules. So next I need to convert this from kilojoules per molecule into joules. So the way I would do that, 2.42 times 10 to the minus 22nd kilojoules per molecule. And then I'm gonna multiply that by a conversion factor for kilojoules to joules. So I know that I want joules on the top and I want kilojoules on the bottom. And I know that one kilojoule is equal to 1,000 joules. And you'll get better at sort of these conversion factors. But if I write this out, I can see very easily that my units of kilojoules will cancel. And this will give me units of joules per molecule. So on my calculator, I would just take my um, you know, previous answer, type times and put in 1,000 hit enter and I get 2.42 times 10 to the minus 19th joules per molecule. Okay, so this is the energy that it's gonna take for my photon to have, essentially to break this one bond. So now all I'm doing is I'm sort of utilizing these equations up here to convert from energy of the photon into the wavelength. So I need to, to apply both equations. So the way that I would do this, I might say that um, since E equals Planck's constant times the frequency, I could say 2.42 times 10 to the minus 19th 
equals 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. This is just the value of, of Planck's constant times the frequency. I can, I can now solve for the frequency. So on my calculator, I've already got this 2.42 value, and if I just divide by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, then this value here, 3.66, that's gonna be the frequency of the photon that needs to hit this, you know, frequency, that's, wow, that is a really bad squiggly line. Let's try that again. So that's a little bit better, still not great. Um, that's the frequency of this photon that's gonna hit this, this bond to break the bond, because this is the energy that's gonna be required in order to, to do that. So 3.66 times 10 to the 14th, and that's one over seconds. Units there are gonna be one over seconds. So now that I have the frequency, I can use this equation to solve for the wavelength. So if, let's scoot this up, um, C equals lambda times wavelength. So if I wanted to use this, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second equals my wavelength that I'm searching for times 3.66 times 10 to the 14th, one over seconds. I can solve this for my wavelength. And again, since I've already got this value in my calculator, all I need to do is then um, take 3.00 e to the eighth, so I'm putting this in here, and then divided by the answer. So I can do second function and then answer, and then that's gonna be 8.20 times 10 to the minus seventh meters. So I really have to, to pay attention to my meters. Going way back to the beginning of this question, I'm looking for my answer in nanometers. So then to convert this meters to nanometers, I would just say that 10 to the ninth nanometers is one meter. My units of meters will cancel out. So again, on my calculator, I'm gonna just multiply this by 10 to the ninth, and that gets me to a value of 820 nanometers. And that is my final answer. Um, so these conversions here, nanometers to meters, uh, or meters to nanometers, you're gonna to have to sort of get used to that, and practice that a little bit more. Um, applying both of these equations, you know, E equals Planck's constant times frequency, and then C, the speed of light, equals the wavelength times the frequency. You know, that's sort of all, all part of this, this problem. All right, let me know if you've got any other questions.